to you. Jackson, and we thank you for Mama Jackson. 
life that they lived while they was here. We thank you for the lives they touched while they was here. We know by your grace and your strength you will strengthen us and the family. For we're dependent on you in this hour. Pray now that the Holy Spirit will have this way. Comfort the sons, the daughters, the grandchildren, and all of those that in the family. Pray now that Pastor Walter will preach a message. Someone will give their hearts to the Lord. Because I do know that time is winding up. And for that, we say thank you. We thank you now because you did it over 2,000 years ago. You died on Calvary that we might have the right to tree of life. And Father, we said thank you today. Bless these thy youth. Hold us in the dark hours that we're going to face this day out. You say that you the present help in the time of need. And for that, we say thank you. Give you glory and honor and praise for the life of these are your two people. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray this afternoon. And everybody said, Amen. Oh, the 
promises of God. What may come and go, we are still standing on his promises. Well, I don't know about you, but I know that he's never short his promise. So you can stand on the promises of God. Amen. At this time, we will have reflections. And I'm sure that those of you that are listed as on the program will be obedient to the wishes of the family and limiting your reflections to two minutes. We will have in this order as a grand, as a God granddaughter, Ms. Perez, uh, as a member and an usher, uh, Sister Lydia Q. Odom, former councilwoman of the city of Miami Gardens, as a, as a godson, Pastor Wimberly, and as a God, a grandson, Alton Jackson IV. We ask that you will come, please, ma'am, please, sir, and let us be obedient and follow the program will come in that, in that order. You can use this mic on my right and on your left to come. So would you come in that order at this time? Saturday morning or a Sunday where grandma and grandpa didn't show up. But there were so many more things that they taught us. Because I had the pleasure of working for them for, again, a great deal of my life, I understood what it was to actually have a job, to keep a job, and be able to come in day after day, no matter what other things that I had going on, but I still had responsibilities that they held me to. And because of that, it allowed us to go on in our lives and really start to do some amazing things. So the Jacksons family, we thank you so much. We from owe the bottom, you from so the bottom much. of our heart, we thank you for allowing us to come in and share Granny Jackson, Grandpa Jackson with you all. We thank you from the bottom of our heart. There's not a day that goes by Though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Um, I want to piggyback on what Sammy and Jaquita said. Except that my tenure is a little bit longer. That I met, I started calling her somewhere along the line, Granny Catherine and Daddy Jack. Uh, back in the 50s, folks. And 
and, and, and I, I, I want the children and the grandchildren to understand that all that I know as a young lady, a middle-aged lady, and then another younger lady now at this stage, <laughs> I learned it from your mother and your grandmother. Let me tell you, as a young girl, and I want to be honest here, as a young girl, Granny Cat was, was hard to deal with as a young Lily. As a young Lily, I started, as the years went by, I learned how to set a table. I learned how to do a lot of things. And, and you know, we, in those days, we had to wear our skirts and our dresses at a certain length. And if you didn't, Granny Catherine was going to let you know. But she had a way of letting you know with love. And when I tell you she would give it to you, she would do that. There's so many things that I, I learned from her as for being a young lady. And then, after a while, it was a long while before I got to meet Daddy Jack, in, in that I kept saying, that can't be her husband, because they were totally, to me, the opposite. But let me tell you, I fell in love with that old man, because he was just so meek and so humble and was so full of knowledge. And, and, and it's amazing that I've been in the company of PhDs, and I've been in the company of the high echelons in education, but never have I been among a couple that was so endowed with knowledge and knew everything. And if you really wanted to learn something, Go and sit at that table in that family room with Daddy Jack. And if you thought he was quiet, then that's when you would find out that he talked even more than Lily Oda. And y'all know that's saying something. But, <laughs> all right, Pastor. <laughs> but I, I, I want you to know that my heart has been so, so heavy. Uh, because I, I ended up calling several times during this period. Adrian would pick up the phone and I'd say, it's just that my fingers automatically dials this number. And, and I ask her for her forgiveness. But Tony, Harold, Adrian, all of you, AJ, Kevin, you have nothing to hold your head down. Look at what God has done through your parents and what he has allowed you all to experience. Even though he gave, biologically, he only gave uh, them, what, five, four, four of you, right? Four, but there's so many extended children. You have a lot of extended sisters and brothers who you are able to call on at any time. And all because of your mother and your father. And for those of you who have not gotten a chance to read the love story for this couple, who ever heard of somebody being married for 73 years in, in all of my life? and his wife had lived a legacy when they were married for 68 years. But 73 years, and, and what makes it so wonderful is that this has been a union of genuine love. A, a union of, of caring one for another. And, and I've had some beautiful experiences with them over the years. I have a sister back there named Jackie. And I have sisters and brothers all over the place. 
But we got started calling them, calling her Granny when Annie Lois came along, and Annie Lois being her goddaughter, and also being the godmother of my daughter. And, and, and my daughter want you all to know that she loves you, and she's on duty today, and she's unable to be here, but beyond the sense, her love to you. God has been, I, I, Adrian said to me during the week that she just don't know how she's gonna do this, how she is going to continue to live without her parents. I shared with her that God is a good God, and I'm telling you what I know. Not what I've heard and what I've read, but I'm telling you what I know. I know what it's like to lose both parents, not at the same time, but we know that this union, because of this union, it was not a secret, and it wasn't even surprising that they went together. Because I could hear, I could hear Granny Cat say, Jack, where you at? Come on here. What's taking you so long? And after a while, you know, I could hear him with his little soft, monotone say, all right, Cat, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. And then, so it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a surprise. It couldn't have been a surprise to you, Tony. How, Adrian, you know that because they had been together for so many years, that they were going to continue to be together. And we thank God for that. And, and I know my two minutes is like rare as probably going to stand up on me. But, but I just want to say to you, I know what it's like to lose parents. I know what it's like to lose a child. I know what it's like to lose siblings. I lost in one year, I lost six siblings in one year. And out of 11, there's two of us left. So I know I've been that route. But I want you to know, and I want to share this with you. Um, God is able to keep you through all that you go through. And I want you to can remember to know that my email hasn't changed, my numbers have not changed, and you can continue to give me a call. But if you would check in 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18, it reads this. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though the outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And then if we check in Matthew 5 and 4, it says, Blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. And then in John 14, 18, it says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And all you have to do is call on the name of Jesus. God bless you. God love you. It's my prayer.
control it like it was. Amen. Can I get some amen? amen. She told me about who I was marrying, and she didn't want to hear that. And later down the road, and I'll be getting divorced and separated. But because of her, our love still grows strong. And for that, we're thankful. Then after that, before we got married, um, you see in the um, program that they had their own janitorial business. Miss Jackson, Catherine Jackson, hired me Mondays and Fridays <laughs> to go to the banks, the clean banks. She taught me my work ethic. That you can't be late, because if you came to pick you up, you weren't ready, she would leave. If Danny Jackson came in a place to get you, if I wasn't ready, they'll leave you. So because of that, they put work ethic in me. And I worked on the job for 35 years because of the foundation that she gave me, along with my parents. So she was not well-educated, we were so to speak, but she was a woman of wisdom and knowledge. And her husband was right there with her. Then I would go to their home, and uh, Alton and Harold and all the neighbors them would be there, and um, I would come in, and you know they welcome me, and, and uh, you know said in the program that she liked to cook. Well, she cooked for everybody. Yeah. Whatever you wanted at her table, you was welcome to it. You was no stranger to her. So, on behalf of me and my family, and often we would call each other and. Check on her, and last time I called her, she was home, and then the last time I got a call, and the call was not what I wanted to hear. But we know that she's in a better place. We know that her work down here is done, but her legacy family will live always in our heart. So we want to say thank you for sharing your dad and your mom with us. We love them. We love them to the heart. God bless you.
We are today comforted by the words of our Lord in Revelation 21, verse 4, which says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Whereas it has pleased the Almighty God and His wise providence call from labor to reward, to dwell with him in the glories of paradise, his servants, Alton and Catherine Jackson. We, the pastor, officers, and members of Greater New Bethlehem Baptist Church, bow our heads in humble submission to the will of God. And we, the members of Greater New Bethlehem Baptist Church, want the family to know that our hearts are with you as we gather to be a devoted Christian goodbye to a loving, kind-hearted couple, Brother Alton and Sister Catherine Jackson. Whereas our hearts were sad of the demise of our dear Sister Jackson and a week later, Brother Jackson. We should not weep as those who have no hope for their life, love, and faithful commitment in the service of the Lord should serve as a worthy example for us to follow for generations to come. Whereas Alton and Catherine Jackson profess a hope in Christ at early ages and were an active and regular supporter of the Greater New Bethel serving on several ministries and always doing the work of the Lord in whatever manner they could. Whereas Alton and Catherine were individuals who exemplified their love for the Lord and their family, they instilled great values in their children, Alton, Harold, Avis, and Adrian, for them to pass on. They taught them a strong devotion to the Lord and Savior and a sense of responsibility to those they encountered who had a need. Whereas the passing of our beloved Alton and Catherine is the will of God, and we embrace the Jackson family because we all have a common bond that will connect us for the rest of our lives. We cannot replace our beloved Alton and Catherine but we will attempt to demonstrate the love they displayed to each of us. Therefore, be it resolved, family, during this time of transitions of the lives of two soldiers of God, we pray that the works they have done, the service they have given, and the lives they have touched will speak for them. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle of work is on. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heaven. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 1. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be given to the Jackson family as an expression of our love and admiration, and another copy will be recorded in the church archive. Humbly submitted on this 12th day of January 2021, the officers and members of Greater New Bethlehem Baptist Church, Reverend Ronnie W. Wallace, Senior Pastor. <laughs> I don't know if you've already been nervous already. 
regards expressing sympathy to the family of Mr. Alton Lieutenant Jackson. Whereas on behalf of the 113,000 residents of the city of Miami Gardens, we extend our sincerest condolences to the family and friends of Mr. Alton Lieutenant Jackson. And whereas Mr. Jackson, a father and longtime resident of Miami Gardens, was an active and devoted member of Great New Bethlehem Baptist Church in Miami Gardens, and whereas his work ethic was noble and he was a person who was busy, was a business savvy, Alton owned a janitorial service which provided over 35 years of service to Reading and Bethel Baptist Church. And he was always diligent and dependable. And whereas in his personal life, he was a devoted family member and was married for 73 years to the same woman. Mr. Jackson enjoyed fishing, bowling, and traveling. His positive outlook on life resonated with those around him as he was compassionate and respectful, and whereas the sun rose on January 13, 1928, and the sun set on January 4, 2021. For Mr. Alton Lieutenant Jackson, in his lifetime, he created many meaningful memories with and gained love and approval from his friends and family. Alton will be missed, but never forgotten by those who cared about him. And now, therefore, Rodney Harris, the mayor of the city of Miami Gardens, along with his colleagues and city council members, Vice Mayor Reginald Leon, Shannon Campbell, Shannon Igadara, Katrina Wilson, Linda Julian, and Robert Stevens III, and on behalf of all of the residents of the city of Miami Gardens, and their sincere condolences and celebrates the life of Mr. Alton Lieutenant Jackson. Signed on this day, the 12th day of January, 2021. The City of Miami Gardens expressing sympathy to the family of Mrs. Catherine Jackson, and whereas on behalf of the 113,000 residents of the city of Miami Gardens, we extend our sincerest condolences to the family and friends of Mrs. Catherine Jackson. And whereas Mrs. Jackson, a mother, a longtime resident of Miami Gardens, was an involved member of Ready New Bethel for many, many years, who exemplified what is meant to be a devoted Christian. And whereas in her personal life, she was married for 73 years to the same man and enjoyed serving her community through, through the church. She spent her days serving others and her husband. She was a compassionate and committed citizen. And whereas the sun rose on April 11, 1931, and the sun set on December 28, 2020, for Mrs. Catherine Jackson, However, a person who departs from this earth never truly leaves, for they are still alive in our hearts and in our minds, and through us daily. They live on. Mrs. Jackson will be missed, but never forgotten by those who cared and loved her. And now, therefore, Rodney Harris, the mayor, along with his colleagues, Vice Mayor Reginald Leon, Shannon Campbell, Shannon Agadara, Katrina Wilson, Linda Julian, Robert Stevens III, and on behalf of the 113,000 residents of the city of Miami Gardens, extend their sincere condolences and celebrate the life of Mrs. Catherine Jackson. A copy of the resolutions will be given to the family. God bless you. Mayor Matthew A. Paget of the city of Opelika. I shall read the resolution. The city of Opelika, Florida, expressing sympathy to the family of Brother Alton and Mother Catherine Jackson. 
Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. John 5, verse 24. Whereas, today we celebrate the homegoing of two extraordinary people of great strength and character. Brother Alton and Mother Katherine Jackson, dedicated and faithful servants who earn the respect, admiration, and high regards of all with whom they came in contact. And whereas, on behalf of our community, we wish to record our deep sorrow over the passing of Brother Alton and Mother Katherine Jackson, lifetime members of Greater New Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church, where they served tirelessly. And whereas, leaving to cherish their memories are their loving children, Alton Jr., Harold, Catherine, and Adrian, devoted grandchildren, Darren, Kevin, Alton, Anton, Anitra, Marquita, Aquila, Kavina, Kai, Tri, and Trayton. Karen's sisters, sister-in-law, Maisie Billings, along with a host of other relatives and friends. And whereas Brother Alton and Mother Catherine Jackson will always be remembered in our hearts as a man and woman of courage and a man and woman of integrity. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Matthew A. Pagas, along with the citizens of the city of Opalaka and my colleagues of the city count, count, <coughs> city commission, Vice Mayor Veronica Williams, Commissioners Alvin Burke, Chris Davis, and John Taylor Jr. do hereby express our deepest sympathy. Now be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be delivered to the family as an expression of sympathy and that a copy be placed in the annuals of Opalaka's history as a tribute to Brother Alton and Mother Catherine Jackson. Signed and sealed of the city of Opalaka, Florida, affixed this 12th day of January, 2021. Matthew A. Paget Mayor.
old deacon heard somebody calling his name. Deacon, you've been a faithful servant. And in that bedroom, he said, hush. Hush. Somebody's calling my name. That person calling his name was Dr. Jesus. And his sweet sister Catherine. So they had no talk with Jesus. Thank you. 
Once again, express the condolences that friends and I have on behalf of our son. Hold on, family. Help is on the way. Just hold on, family. Is that friends and relatives may have 
Be this to their mother and father today is for the victory of God.
afternoon to say farewell to God's service, Brother Alton Jackson and Sister Catherine Jackson. I've had the privilege for nearly 20 years to work up close by them and and I can say in those 20 years, they've always been the same. Amen. Sister Jackson's always the same. Come here, baby. And she wants to tell you something. And I remember Brother Jack, which I called him Brother Jack, he always had a sense of humor. And he said, Brother Jack, how you feel? He said, with my hands. <laughs> you know 
after life. Paul deals with in these first eight verses. He deals with three things that I like to look at. He talks about the believer's expectation in verse one. In verse two through four, he talks about the believer's desire. Five and through eight, he talks about the believer's assurance. And so as we look at these divine words that Paul has given to us, we want to try to examine what he is saying to us today in these eight verses, which is so powerful. And this is a blessing for these, these verses pertain primarily to he who have been born again, been washed in blood. These, those who have known without a doubt that the Lord is their savior. So Paul says in verse one, he says, for we know. And I, I, I submit to you this morning that there's just something that you ought to know. You, you can't guess about it, you can't assume about it, you can't rely on what someone else told you, but you have to know. This man Paul, who once prosecuted Christian, who once had letters in his pocket to bind folks and take them back to Jerusalem, now he has been changed, he has been renewed, he has been delivered from that way, and he says, for we, we implies to all of us, who've been uh, born again, all of us that have been uh, 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 saved by his blood. He says, we know. In other words, we're not guessing, we're not supposing, we're, we're not thinking, but there's some things that I know. And I, I, I pray today that, there, that if anybody here, uh, there's some things that you know. You know without doubt that heaven is your goal. You know without a doubt that Jesus is your savior. But he says, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, the word tabernacle is tent, in this body, and we know that, 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 that this body is subject to decay. This body is subject to, 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 to be destroyed. And, and, I, and Paul says, this is something that I know. He says, if our earthly body of this tabernacle were dissolved, uh, we have a building of God. The wonderful thing about this building is that it's not, it's, not, it's not based on man's hand. It's not based on man's education. It's not based on man's knowledge. But he says, if this earthly body is destroyed, we have a building of God. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God is my architect and my building. He's the, he's the one that have, uh, uh, have me another building prepare for me. For, for I've discovered that this building that we house now, it's going to leak sometime. Yeah. This building we're in is going to get tired sometime. It's going to get weary along the way. But after a while, by and by, don't know when, don't know why, but, but, but in the morning, we will have a building of God. That building that, that does not decay. They sing the song that says that, that this building keep on leaning and I got to move. But, but when I get this new building, this building that God himself constructed, we, we know that Jesus said in, in John chapter 14 that he's going away to prepare a place for us. And, and I don't know about you, but I thank God that he's going to prepare a place. And so Paul said in line of that, when we get to that other building that God made, he says a house not made with hands, eternal uh, in the heaven. In other words, the body we hear now, that we possess now, is only temporary. This body that we have now is not, was not designed, is not designed now to live always. But, but there's a body that God has for you and I that is designed to live forever. The Jacksons lived many years on 20th Avenue, but they're going to another street now. They're going to another address. And, and, and they had to move from 20th Avenue. And now they have moved uh, to a building that, that never will be destroyed, never will be dissolved. He says, eternal in the heaven. But, but that, that's believers' expectation for that building that God talks about. And if you've been washed with the blood, you've been saved and redeemed, you ought to look for that day that you obtain the building that only God has built. But not only that, Paul says a believer 
have a desire. I don't know about you, but I don't only desire to worship him down here. I, I don't only desire to know him here, but I desire to be with him forever. I desire, I desire to, to, to look upon his face. I desire to walk with him and talk with him. For he says, for, for in this we grow. Earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with a house which is from heaven. In other words, if you walk with him, you want to live with him. If you, if you, if you walk with him, you want to be with him. So he says, he says, I, I groan, I wrestle, I, I toss inside because I have a desire to be in that building which is from heaven. He says, for, for so being that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. In other words, uh, you, you, you're not destitute when you are with him. When you're clothed with the heavenly body that God has prepared. And I know about you, but I know without a doubt that he has a new home prepared for believers. For he says, for, for we that are in this tabernacle, in other words, uh, uh, Brother Jack, says Jack uh, is not groaning anymore, uh, but, but we that are still walking upon this life, we, we, we who are still breathing the air of this world, we, 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 we will sit in a situation, we are in this tabernacle do wrong, being burdened. Not, not that we shall be unclothed, but, but clothed upon that mortality might swallow us up. And so one day that, that, that when this whole life is over, yes, we, we want to fly away with him. When this whole walk in life, worrying about tomorrow, this whole life that we deal with, have to see doctors after doctors, pain after pain. I'll stop by the table. Sister Cat, don't have to worry about arthritis anymore. She don't have to worry about being able to straighten her fingers anymore, to walk in her feet anymore, because she's got a new body. The truth of the matter, the truth of the matter is that you and I have problems. You and I have to worry about day to day. She finished, Brother Jackson, Jackson have finished their, their course. They laid down their, their sword because they have been swallowed up. And I don't know about you, but one of these days, I plan to be swallowed up by the Lord. In other words, totally digested by him, totally engulfed by him, totally consumed by him. He said, he said I might be swallowed up. Now, not only do a believer have a desire, but a believer have an assurance. I, I don't know about you, but I, it's a good thing to be assured of something. You know, uh, Allstate says you're in good hands with Allstate. But I want to assure you today that you're in better hands with he who died upon Calvary Cross. But well, he said, now, we that wrought us for the self-same thing as God, who has given us unto us the earnest spirit. Therefore, we are confident. And I stop by to tell you, when you know that you know that you've been born again, when you know that uh, one of these days, trouble won't be no more, you can have confidence. Confidence is, is, is knowing without doubt that I may have some ups and I may have some down, but everything is going to work out for my good. For he says, we always confident, knowing that whether we're home in the body, we're absent from the Lord. And so Paul says, that's why, for we walk by faith and not by sight. See, faith, uh, you, you, can't, you can't measure faith. You can't measure it by uh, quantity, but you measure it by how you walk. Notice he says, uh, they don't walk by sight. In other words, you don't look at things as they are, but you look at things uh, how 
there's going to be. For Paul says, I, I walk by, by faith. And so this morning, this afternoon, my brothers and sisters, I wonder, is there anybody here that can testify that they walk by faith? Is there anybody here that can stand and, and confess that no matter how much the wind blow, no matter how much turbulence in their life, they're walking by faith? Because sometimes in this life, things don't look good. Sometimes things don't even make you feel good. But you got to keep on walking by faith. And I've discovered, I've discovered when you walk by faith, uh, it's not predicated to how you feel, but, but you, it's predicated on who you know. And, and when you know Jesus, uh, the Christ, uh, you, you might walk through the valley and you might walk through mountains. Uh, because you walk by faith, you can say the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not alone and what I know about Jesus is when you walk by faith he'll feed you in the midst of your enemies even when folks uh, smile in your face uh, and try to stab in your back you can walk by faith uh. so Paul says that's why we're confident uh, I, I say I, I'd rather be absent from the body uh, and, and to be present with the Lord uh, because when I'm absent from the body, I don't have to worry about problems and circumstances. When I'm absent from the body, I don't have to worry about meeting doctor's appointments. And I stop by to tell you that, that Brother Jack and Sister Jack are absent from the body. And the Bible said that when you're absent from the body, you're present with the Lord. And so I don't know about you, I'm glad to know that, that, that they have made up yeah, the mind is fall of Jesus. Uh, and I stop by to tell you uh, that absence from the body is not a bad thing. It's, it's a great thing because when you leave this world uh, and you're with the Lord, everything, all right, uh, they don't have no more ups and downs, uh, no more rushing here and rushing there, but, but they're present with God. Uh, and I just want to let you know, hold my way to glory, uh, that I'm one of these old days. Uh, I'm going to be from this old body, uh, but don't worry about me, uh, and don't worry about brother and sister Jackson, uh, they'll finish their course, uh, they'll win their race, uh, I'll stop by the table, uh, if you keep the faith, uh, and keep your hand in God's hand, uh, everything, uh, if anybody here knows that everything uh, will be alright, uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I'm glad, uh, I'm glad uh, that I've got and confidence that one of these days when I lay down and don't get up anymore, I'm going to be with the Lord. Ain't all right? Ain't all right? Is there anybody here that's not ashamed to testify that I'm so glad? I'm glad that I know Jesus and Jesus know me. I stop by the table that Sister Jack and Brother Jack, they did what the Lord says. They let the man and a woman join together. Let no man break asunder. 73 years, mighty long time. I stop by to tell you when you put your hand in God's hand, He will, He will. Won't He do it? Is there anybody know that the God we serve is a
all power in God's hand. A believer's confidence that you can know that you know that when this old world, when this old body is dissolved, you've got another building not made by hands. Is there anybody here today that doesn't know that you know that if you don't wake up tomorrow, that you have another building. I want to give you an opportunity to give your hand and your life to Jesus. <laughs> if you're here today, wherever you want to fellowship and wherever you want to become a member at, I'll be glad to send a letter to that pastor. But I want you to give your life to Christ. Today is a mighty good day. I've heard so many wonderful things as a family that utilize, eulogize brother and sister Jai. But if you really want to honor him, honor Sister Jackson's mother, Brother Jai, I suggest that you give your life to Jesus on today. For I can say, on the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord. And, and so you can stand and profess on the year of my grandmother, my mother, my father, I saw the Lord. And I accepted him as my Savior. So if you're here today, and you need to make a commitment unto him, Today is a good day that you can do that today. God bless you. God keep you as our prayer. Thank you. 